Hello, this is Haka the Bean, and today we're going to be reading one of the ins one of the things that I've been meaning to read. Um, today we're going to be reading the Pantheon, the inscription that was um, detailed in level 51. That means that tomorrow we'll be reading the discovery log of, um, I'm going to call it the Crossroads. Anyway, if you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Now let's get right into this. The following text has been and transcribed and translated from an inscription upon a stone wall discovered in level 51. The loss are believed to have been responsible for initially etching it. Judging by the manner in which it was carved, it is one of the oldest texts that we have discovered so far. Much of the wall's face is damaged, leaving only fragments of the text intact. Even then, some segments are still yet to be deciphered. We are nowhere near or close to the old picture. And so the gods emerged from the Aether as they came down from to form paradise. Just as a sculptor brings forth their masterpiece from a lamp of clay, the divine touch of the gods brought forth paradise from the void. Each god played a pivotal role in creation, blessing us with many gifts and necessary evils. We give ourselves to the gods, appeasing them in hopes that they may continue to bless us with yet more gifts and usher in eons of prosperity to come. Our gods are as follows. Augustus, the angel of creation, his beauty is unrivaled, as is his ambition. He spins flesh, blood, and bone from his fingertips, breathing life into all the lesser and greater or animal spirits of this plane. Singularis, the foe of creation. He of eight arms and one hundred eyes, the consumer of light, his path of destruction knows no bound nor limit, as the very stars tremble in fear before him. Kirai, the primeval force of chaos, the trickster, it is from him that we learn to forge our own paths, and not all desire needs to be suppressed and his order need be synonymous with evil. He is the protector of our will, and the scourge of oppression. Solaris, the Star Mother, Grand Custodian of the Heavens, who consumes the planets and stars that have reached the end of their journey. Divas, the Keeper of Time. It is from them that we learn to value the time in our lives. A is the maintainer of time. A teaches us to spend our time wisely, as A does with our machinery within our timeless domain. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that one right. That's a that's an interesting neo pronoun to learn though. Gatekeeper, the guardian of all thresholds. He is the ultimate authority by which we are granted access to all outer and inner realms. He is a guide to travelers and a jailer of the wicked. We explore the farthest frontiers in his name, venturing where no soul has ever dared. Lilith, the goddess of life and death. Her eyes and hair are pure darkness, and hellfire is her dress. She is both life and death, light and dark. The sacred fire whose warmth lingers light and which touch devours flesh. The dark uh, abyss that accepts every tear and sorrow, every smile and laugh, and whose gentle embrace will claim us all in the end. I'm sorry. Gilead Ayan. Diad Lord of Super, Grey King Unparalleled, Ashen God, who
whose merged form of light and stupor and limbo and all perpetuity. It varies its forms and great royalty, yet a king of no kingdom, of no castle, of no crown, but the ashen silver ring dotting the two faces of its unalive soul, and its pale near nothingness on the rotting right hand, and the one bills is still his sword that guard that garment dies in the near in nothingness of all everything. May its half-dead form be immutable, and its grey kingship split and merge all in twain. A balance that should never be, yet subsisting as a pallid parasite, mocking and mimicking stability in its most putrid manifestation. Within the seams and the walls of reality, and existence and non-existence, feeding its dominion of great harper incessant Uper, and heed well, remember these very words, the mind, the body, the soul, all shall be twain, and stupor feast, and stagnant inside them, the all-seer indecipherable. You know, sometimes it is really hard to freaking read. Fengari, the balanced and perfect root of all thoughts. They exist for the sole purpose of giving us thoughts, sacrificing their identity, and being in order to remain empty and avoid corruption. All must remain balanced for the purpose of thoughts to roam and free. Atlas, the unyielding force of perpetual the one from whom we are able to express, feel, and remember all that gives us the will to move forward. The Lady in White, Keeper of Knowledge, the Curator of Infinite Wisdom, the contents of her vast archive enlightens us with less knowledge, memorizes our legacy. Um... That sounds familiar. Oops. Morpheus, the eternal dreamer of a greater dream, the traveler of the Elniric realm, visiting people in their sleep, in hopes of one day awakening from one he is now trapped in. Protestia, the goddess of agriculture and desire. She has paved the way for natural prosperity for as long as we have been alive. Our prayers, just like her flowers, blossom into blessing as we achieve our greatest dreams and our smallest hopes. It is the sowing of fate in her and ourselves that we reap what it is we truly desire. Philia, the ethereal all incarnation of love, a merciful and compassionate goddess that loves humans dearly. She is always seen around people and animals, warmly helping others and offering as much love as she can give. Love and peace may be sparked within all who are pierced by her blooming rose arrows. So it. I think that's how you pronounce it. Lord of grace, bearer of kindness, from their cups flows everlasting goodwill. Gudang, the muse, she, reju she rejuvenates the mind as rest rejuvenates the body. She inspires all of us and in turn is a result of our inspiration. We honor her by expressing our souls through painting, writing, song, and performance. Ixal, eldest serpent, coveter of the stars, and dwells in darkness, awaiting those in need of its intervention. The Sisters Three, a trinity of crystal maidens, Vivian of Turquoise, Ita of Amethyst, and Ilian of Ruby. The first is compassionate, the second and is melancholic, and the third is wrathful.
Not too surprising for a red to be considered a wrathful. That seems to be a pretty common um, stereotype, it seems. Anyway, Claudius, the champion, the Grand Empyrean, imperfect and glorious, first of knights. It is from him that we learn to protect what we hold most dearly. He is a fierce and valiant warrior, the knight in shining armor. All foes in his path are vanquished by his blade of valor. We honor him by fighting for what we believe in. I'm going to zoom in on this one. I am not saying that name ever again. I know I did not pronounce that at right. Anyway, the Arbiter of Justice it is from him that we structure our laws and morals. He brings forth all dark deeds to the light. All lies are pierced by his gaze, and all sin is, is pierced by his spear. He is judge, jury, and executioner. In his name, we prosecute the guilty and liberate the innocent. Yeah, can, and, and we prosecute him for being guilty of needing a name change? I'm sorry, but that name is just impossible. I'm almost certain I did not say it right at all. Anyway, Nanka. The jovial jester, his songs and dances provide entertainment and laughter to all. He teaches us that we must not always take ourselves seriously and that merrymaking is healthy for the soul. Yeah. Be sure to laugh, everyone. It's healthy. <laughs> Alright, so I guess these are the deities within the Lost um, Pantheon, or at least they were. These were inscribed on the walls in the Temple of Level 51. And I don't know what the heck happened. A lot of the names were pretty simple-ish to try and figure out a pronunciation. And that last one just kind of threw me for a loop. Anyway, that was um, the Pantheon of the Lost. That's what I'm going to call this video. If you like this video, please like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I have no idea what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, so until then, goodbye!